Hello, my name is Ray Franklin. I'm a Senior Commodity Analyst for Energy Professionals. Today's video will summarize my August 31st energy update. In my August 10th energy update, I said similar to 2016, natural gas is trading within a buy zone. And in 2016, when natural gas traded out of its buy zone, it remained above that zone for three years. And now, on August the 10th, I stated in that report, natural gas was just moving out of that buy zone. And as you can see in this chart, on August the 10th, natural gas had just moved out of this year's buy zone. In 2016, anyone wise enough to lock in a fixed rate for the next three years before prices increased saved a great deal of money. Therefore, with natural gas prices now moving out of its buy zone on August the 10th, I recommended locking in rates before they moved higher long term. And as you can see over the last three weeks, natural gas has continued to move higher. In 2016, when natural gas moved out of its buy zone, it remained above this zone for three years. And I believe we're facing a similar scenario. Why do I believe prices will be higher long term? Because of basic economics. The recent lows are below the cost of production, and companies producing natural gas will not generate profits. Therefore, weaker companies won't survive, and companies who do survive will be highly motivated to decrease production, leading to higher prices long term. The evidence that oil and gas companies are decreasing production is reflected by the most recent Baker Hughes report. This report shows that oil rigs, active oil rigs, have declined 76% year over year, and active natural gas rigs have declined 56%. A large decline in active oil and gas rigs is resulting in decreased production. The Energy Information Administration is reporting that they expect natural gas production will decrease nearly 4% in 2020 and decrease more than 5% in 2021. While natural gas production is expected to decrease, the exports of natural gas are anticipated to continue increasing. This is related to the exports of liquefied natural gas and also increased pipelines uh, going to Mexico. In 2019, we saw a large increase in the exports of liquefied natural gas, increasing about 60%, going to 5 billion cubic feet a day. This year, we're anticipating that, uh, that growth is going to slow somewhat due to COVID, but we're still going to see over 5 billion cubic feet this year per day being exported. And next year, well over 7 billion cubic feet is anticipated. In addition, the exports to Mexico are anticipated to increase. And this is significant because approximately 40% of total exports are exports to Mexico. And if we're anticipating that those exports are going to increase because of the completion of the southern region of the Guadalajara pipeline. So this combination of increased liquefied natural gas exports and increased exports to Mexico is going to create what I call structural imbalances. And this would likely lead to much higher prices as we go into 2021. In my July 7th and July 13th energy updates, I said the lows that were reached on June 26th were just a trading phenomena and would be very likely to be the lows that we would see in this year's long-term trading cycle. Remember, the lows we're reaching and at the end of June were the lowest inflation-adjusted pricing since 1990. And any clients that listened to those recommendations at that time paid the lowest prices for natural gas and electricity that they will see during this market cycle. In my August 10th energy update, I said in 2016, clients who locked in rates long term when, it, when the market moved out of the buy zone saved a great deal of money. And I recommended clients today with the market moving out of the buy zone this year should lock in rates long term. And those who did so were able to lock in rates lower than where they are today. So what is the takeaway from this report? If you not listened to my previous reports in which I was recommending that you would lock in rates long term, I hope that you will do so now. Remember, structural imbalances are in place, and the longer you delay now, the more you will likely pay for electricity and gas in the future. I hope this video helps you understand the wisdom of locking in rates long term for both electricity and for natural gas. And until my next video, please take care.